is coming. Close your eyes. Repeat that, that theme in your mind two times. What it means to you. Hmm? What it means to you as you repeat it in your mind. It means that it's not time for us to skylark. Can I talk like that? It's not time for us to play around. It's not time for us to play church. And say it's not time for you to stay away from God. Can I talk to everybody today? It's not time for you to, to, to continue walking the path you're walking. Because that change is coming. And you know it's coming for us too. <laughs> It's coming from unsafe too. Are you ready or not? It's coming. Because you, you gotta change too. But change is one thing. But into what? You can change your love with dress now, sister Pat. But change into what? I'm saying to your friends, and that change is coming whether you ready or not. It's coming for unsaved. It's coming for Christians. It's coming for those that are playing church. It's coming for those that are idling. It's coming for those that are working hard. I say it is coming for lack, stock, and barrel. It's coming for everyone. Are you ready? The text we want to use to cover this theme today is Saint is Corinthians, first Corinthians 15, verse 51, through to 50. Verse 51 to 58. We're just gonna do two verses, 52 and 58. The last church is stand. Stand as a find it. Because I want this message today to synchronize, to settle. To disturb, to prepare, to awake us, to stand us up tall before Jesus. And so I'm going to take time out. I'm going to ask you all to stand. Everybody stand up. And I'm going to ask you to go to those verses. 1 Corinthians 15 and read verse 51 and 52 first. And then you go down to 58. Read it together. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the beginning of an eye, at the last trumpet, for our trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruptible, and we shall be changed. There they were granted others. Stop. Go down to verse 58 and read it together. Say thanks be to God. Take your seat. Hold your Bible there. We'll come back to that. Now I want to look at the word that. And kind of look at how this word come about to be used. Anybody ever look at you and, and, and say that that the boy then? That the girl then who that or, or, or that? Thing. It speaks to the one single out. So here we have maybe 20 men in the house. And if I speak, if I'm speaking to one of you, if I single out one of you, it means that I am talking to you. Let's say I'm talking to the cameraman, Brother Charmian. I'm not talking to the other men in the house. I'm talking to Brother Charmian. Cameraman, Wagwan. Say something about us. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. You may talk. I singled you out of all the men in the house. I want you to understand. When we talk about that, it singled out something or someone or a place, whatever it is. It singled out something. That speaks to something that has been singled out. The one that design, the one designated to perform on stage or to go to whatever you appoint him or her to go to or the car that you have designated to take you to wherever you want to go. That car, you're talking about having 10 cars in the garage and you pointed at that particular car. That red car, meaning that's the one you 
want to take you to the airport. So you are speaking, you are talking to that red car or about that red car. That is a car designated to take you to the airport. That's a figure of speech. It is used as a relative, a relative pronoun to introduce a, a, a clause, especially a restrictive clause, like a car that has the broken windshield. So you would be, you would be speaking specifically to the car that has the broken windshield. And, and so there are clause within our laws that no car with broken windshield must drive on the road. Alright, so out of 50 cars, you have one that has a broken windshield. To that car you would be speaking that it is not fit to drive on the road because there are clauses where it is against the law. So you would have, you would have been speaking specifically to that car. You see, I want to give you so many definitions for you to understand that I am, and we are talking about a particular day, that day, that change, that is where we are looking into right now, that change. I said it to you earlier on, there are many changes that are going to come. Good change, bad change, change we don't like, but it's going to come. But I'm speaking, Brother Alvin, specifically to that change uh, that you and I have been waiting for. Yeah. Hey, can I tell somebody? We better wait for that change yeah. because it's coming. Yeah. 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 Change. Within that day, it's going to happen. Yes, I'm saying to your friends, within that day, within that hour, that minute, that second, that year, that change is going to come, Sister Mason. Can I say to you again, within that hour, that day, that minute, that year, a change, that change is going to come, whether you like it or not. I'm saying to the people in the house today, for that change, my beloved, we must prepare. Yes. Because we must appear before God or Jesus Christ that day within that change. We are going to appear before him whether you want it or not. It's like one day you are going to die whether you like it or not. Can I see the other those who are not going to die? Well said my brother. You're going to be ushered into glory like I don't remember the man name now. Enoch. Let me out here. But let me see my people. What was the name of the man who was taken up alive? Brother Campbell, you're supposed to know. Enoch. Don't let me tell you. Enoch. 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 Hey. And somebody say Elijah too. Well, the Bible says Enoch live and never, never die. All right. But Elijah was ushered up into glory and his chariot. So I saw him over here. I, I want to think that he might be like that. But, but understand. So point that to man, come to church, wants to. But after that, come to church, man. So understand, friends, within that hour, within that day, within that minute, within that second, within that year, we shall be changed. Tell your neighbor, we shall be changed. Rise and change from mortal. What do you think is going to be easy? No, no. Uh, it's not going to be easy, friends. And so, let us go back to our text uh, that, that, that declares uh, that a change is coming. Verse 51, it talks about a change that is coming. Somebody read verse 51. Yes, Paul, Paul said, listen to me, people. I want to show you something here now. I want to show you a mystery here. I want to show you something that you did not know. You did not know that this was going to happen. So let me show it to you. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all want but what? We shall all. Somebody said all. <laughs> we shall all. We shall all be changed. <laughs> he was talking to the preacher right here. Though, man. We shall all be changed. Change. Continue. We shall all be changed. Read now. In a moment. 
glint in the twinkle of an eye. <laughs> Understand, friends, we are going to change. Read verse 52. What do you say? In a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruptible, and we shall be changed. The dead shall raise. Shall be changed. Now, as we go down to verse 50, there are three things that I want to point out today. There are three things, beloved. We must be. We must be. There are three things we must be. And so all of us, beloved, who today we are, we are so steadfast, and tomorrow we 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 we, we, we slow down. Tomorrow we we we, we our wings split. Tomorrow we, 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 we walk away. Tomorrow we, we are down there. I'm saying, friends, if we're going to meet that change, I'm saying we have to be number one. Step back. I'm talking to the church today, friends. We have to be step back. For that change is coming, beloved. And if we are not going to be steadfast, if we are going to allow every wind of doctrines to blow at our feet and to knock us over, I'm saying that day is going to come upon us like a deal in the night and we are not going to be ready. Can I hear somebody talk to the man? We are not going to be ready. So I'm saying to the people today, we must be steadfast. Now what is steadfast? It's alright to say I'm steadfast. It's alright to say I'm going to be steadfast. But when it comes down to the moment when we need to be steadfast, yeah, yeah. what does it mean? It is to be fixed. Brethren, everything about us must be fixed. Everything. I remember years ago, my father-in-law then took sick and he was going to the hospital. They were, they were, they were taking him to the hospital. And so, I'm going to lie down here. And so he, he was so sick and he stretched out in the van to which they, they, they were taking him into. And so while he was there lying down, no payment of my people, he was there lying down with his legs fixed like this, or like this. And they tried to take his, his, his leg from off the other and to put it aside for him to relax some more. And while they, the more they try, is the more he took, he took that, that, that leg and he put it back over. And the more he tried to take it and put it back down, until one day he said, listen to me, leave me alone. I'm fixing myself to go home to glory. He fixed his legs. He was, he was on his way out. And his mind was fixed. His body was fixed. He was positioned. I'm saying to the people of God, to be steadfast is to position yourself. It's a lack to line up yourself with Jesus. And anything trying to move you, I'm saying, tell it, tell those things, leave me alone. I'm fixed for Jesus. I'm fixed against that day. Our heart needs to be fixed. Our minds need to be fixed. Our desire needs to be fixed. Our bodies need to be fixed. Our intention needs to be fixed. Everything about us must be fixed in Jesus. Somebody clap your hand for Jesus. Everything must be fixed. Some of us are still searching for a fix. And we say we find Jesus. The day you found Jesus, you have already been fixed. You just need to get to keep it fixed. Amen. Tell anybody keep it fixed. Don't let it ever fool you. Don't let it ever tell you that this is the way you must fix yourself. No, Jesus already told us how we must fix ourselves. To be steadfast, beloved, is to fix your heart and God. Amen. Fix your purpose. Yes. Fix your mind. Yes. Fix the intention. Yes. Fix your desire. Amen. It cannot be a, a stable desire. It cannot be a wavering desire. If it's Jesus, it's Jesus. If you are born for glory, you are born for glory. You cannot born for glory and stand living an earthly life. Can I tell somebody something? If we are born for glory, it's glory we are born for. Fixed, are having an unchanging 
passion or position. We need to have an unchanging position in Jesus. Too often we, we, we jump position. Too often we are Christians and we are not Christians. Too often we have a made up mind and then we have not a made up mind. Too often we want to go to church and then we don't want to go to church. Too often we want to praise and then we don't want to praise. I'm saying fix your praise in Jesus. Position your praise in Jesus. Position your heart in Jesus. I'm saying to your friends, if you're going to remain steadfast, your position must be fixed in Jesus Christ. What's your position today? Are you in or are you out? One foot in and one foot out. You better fix it. If it's out, it's out. If it's in, it's in. <laughs> I'm saying to you, that change is coming. Fix up ourselves. Be steadfast. It means having on a change in position. Thirdly, <laughs> it is to be firmly loyal. Can I say that again? It is to be firmly loyal to Jesus Christ. It is to be firmly loyal against that day. I'm saying, friends, where your loyalty lies, let it lie in Jesus. If you are here today, and you know your loyalty is not loyal to Jesus. I'm saying we are not steadfast yet. So we better get back to the place where we are loyal to Jesus. In the morning we are loyal. In the evening we are loyal. In the good times we are loyal. In the bad times we are loyal. In every time we are loyal. Because that change is coming. And it is coming for loyal people. Be firm in your loyalty to Jesus. Five months we are, we are where church goes. And six months when it comes down to December and Christmas, we are party goers. If we're gonna party, party for Jesus. Be loyal to Jesus. Yeah. Hey, like a parent, no need to be loyal to, to their children. Yeah. Like a wife, you need to be loyal to her husband. And like a husband needs to be loyal to their, 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 their wife. And like a pastor needs to be loyal to their, 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 their followers. And like the followers need to be loyal to their pastor. And like the deacon need to be loyal to their to their sheep. And you and it goes on and on and on. It's about loyalty. If we are gonna go and meet that day, we have to be loyal to our boss. Can't go to work. I'm gonna work five hours. And we take lunch time six hours or three hours. And we spend time on the woman at work when we should be working. My sister Andrea, instead of co taking calls from your boss, you're taking calls from your friends. I'm saying to your friends, if we are going to be loyal, let us be loyal. If we are not loyal to Jesus, I'm saying we are in trouble. We are going to be in trouble against the day. So God is calling and the loyal people to stay loyal. Stay firm in your loyalty to him. Because one day, He's gonna ride the club. <laughs> One day he's gonna come. One day he's gonna call the church home. Be loyal to God against that change. To be steadfast is to be loyal in our thoughts, in our hearts, in our mind, and to our commitments, to our social involvement and everything that we are involved in. God is saying to us, we have to stay loyal to those and him. It speaks to constantness. We have to be constant in our position. We have to be constant in our belief. It can't be that we are believing seven days right and Sunday service is wrong. It can't be we are believing that Sunday service is right and, and, and Sunday service is wrong. We have to believe in what we believe in. Be constant in our belief. Be constant. Too many of us are wavering in our beliefs. Too many of us are even doubting whether we're going to go to heaven or not. Too many of us are doubting whether we're going to be saved or not. But once you accept Jesus, once you're serving Jesus in spirit and in truth, don't ask if you're going to be saved. You need to know you are saved. You need to know you are ready. You need to know you are prepared. You need to know that Jesus is coming back. 
for you. He comes for you. Let us stop treating our walk with Jesus like it's food we eat it. Today we want pork, tomorrow we want chicken. The other day we want calaboo. The other day we want cabbage. If it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Be constant in our belief. Be constant in our walk. Be constant in our service. That is what we're talking about. Be steadfast. is to be is to be it's in your word is to be what is to be unmovable movable every little thing every little thing we want to move Say, friends, if we're gonna meet that day with joy, Amen. we must be unmovable. Amen. You cannot be unmovable unless you have Jesus all over you. Yeah. You cannot be unmovable unless Jesus is holding your right hand. Amen. So I heard a song said, Hold the right hand, Jesus. Hold the right hand. Not only Jesus needs to hold our right hand, Jesus needs to hold everything. Sometimes you hold the right hand and the left hand won't go up there. Left hand won't show punch. You ever go to school and can I talk to you a little bit? You ever, when, when you were going to school and boy you came at your back and you're not right and somebody tried to punch you and you want to leave this boy so much to hold the right hand. You just punch him with the left hand. And so somebody have to come and hold him. Hold, hold the left hand. And when you hold the left hand you want to kick him with the right foot. And when you hold the right hand you want to kick him with the left foot. I'm saying I want Jesus to hold all of us. Because sometimes he hold the right hand but he won't show the left hand. I'm saying come on yourself. Jesus. Yeah. Let Jesus hold not only your right hand but your right foot on your yeah. Let him hold everything. Your yeah, body. Yeah. That's what we say. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Say it again. Deliver me, Jesus. You have to have a mindset that you're not moving. The Bible said, though the earth be need to move, I will stand down. Though the mountains shake, I will stand firm. Though the ocean roar, I will stand firm. I'm saying to your friends, maybe the ocean is, is, is roaring at you. Maybe the earth be need to shake it. Maybe the mountain is stumbling down upon you. But in the name of Jesus, stay unmovable. Stay rooted and grounded. In the name of the Lord, somebody say amen. I say to the church today, stay rooted, grounded in Jesus against that day when that change will come. I know some of you want the change, but you have to wait on Jesus. Of moving. One may say it's easy to say, but it's hard to do a lie that. That's a lie. I heard Jesus said, I heard the Bible said rather, I can do <laughs> all things <laughs> to Christ <laughs> who strengthens me. Who is your strength today? Where lies your strength today? Make sure your strength is in Jesus. I heard the writer said, I'm hiding my life uh, in Jesus. Uh, he's the only shelter for my soul. Uh, can I tell somebody something here? Hide your life in Jesus. Uh, or whatever is happening around you, hide your life in Jesus. So that you can remain unmovable. I wish I have time. I might have a point. But I have to give you this one. Man. Listen to me. Man. Oh God Almighty, I love you. I'll be moved. You can't move me. The second one I want to give you. Unyielding. I want to get this one. Being unmovable, it speaks to unyielding in principles. <laughs> if you're a Christian, you're a Christian. Can I say that again? Can you hear me? Does he not hear me? To be a move of the church, we have to be an alien in principles. You cannot be Christian today and look like an unsafe tomorrow. You cannot be walking like Christian today and walk like an unsafe tomorrow. You cannot be dancing like Christian today and tomorrow you're booking down at the end of the secular world song. Principle must be a part of the preparation against that day. It has to be that you are, we are principal enough to walk away from the boogie down type of music. And some of the friends that we keep break the principle. Because I heard the writer say in Psalms 1, hey, walk at night in the council of the ungodly, not stand it in the ways of sinners, not sit in the seats. But many of us broke those principles. I'm saying to us, Brother Danny, if we are going to be unmovable, we have to be unyielding in our principles. The second thing, principles, unyielding our principles and our purpose. Too many times our purpose waver. What's your purpose today? Your purpose is to what? Become a Sunday school teacher. Your purpose is to what? Become a preacher. Your purpose is to become a, a deacon. Your purpose is to do so many things in the kingdom of God. It has to be unyielding. It cannot be today you want to shine the benches and tomorrow you don't want to. Tomorrow you cuss. The pastor asks you to shine the bench. It has to be that we are unyielding. Not only in principles, but in purpose. The third thing is that we have to be an alien, hallelujah, in, a, in our adherence, our, our devotion. Our devotion to God must be an alien. It cannot be, friends, that we are devoted today and tomorrow we give devotion to somebody else. It cannot be we are devoted to God today and tomorrow our devotion lies with our boss. It cannot be today we are devoted to God and next week we are devoted to party and Pastor could have called us till week. <laughs> sorry this one is busy. Sorry this meal is full of but sorry I'm gonna sorry. I'm saying to us church <laughs> if we are going to be be step 
pass, we have to be loyal, we have to be unyielding in our devotion to God. Amen. Too many of us are unyielding in our devotions to our friends and ourselves and our boss and our children and anything that surrounds us. But when it comes down to God, we are not devoted. Our devotion is, is puny. Our devotion is shaky. Our devotion is weak. Our devotion is not with passion. Amen. I was a Bible study the other night and when the thing hit me so. When the, when the word hit me so, you know the word is, is, is sharper than the two inches sword. And when it, when it, when it cuts you, it cuts you asunder. It makes you feel like, I can't even explain it. And then I stopped in my in my church and I said, God, I wish the church was here. Yes. Yeah. We were here Saturday morning, and God, when the service hits, Sister Sophia, you were here. God has stopped the one person that was the church was here. But we are not loyal in our devotion. Stole me from us, stole me afterwards. But yes, we are talking about the chain. We are talking about that chain that is coming. And, and, and oh, we want to we meet that change. But are we unmovable? Some of us are like people. <laughs> Lord, I'll die with you. I don't matter what happened, I'll die with you. But when it comes down to be devoted to him, when we need it most, we deny him. We deny him the prayer. We deny him the praise. We deny him the fasting because we love our belly too much. We deny him of such. I'm saying to us, friend, we have to get back to devotion and to God. I'm preaching a little bit here. We need to be divorced, devoted to God in our time management. Can I talk about that? Hey. We need to be have devotion in our, in our time management when it comes down to the Lord Jesus and his business. We know church is at 11 o'clock, but we're rolling 11 30 and we feel nice. Everything all right now. We don't accomplish everything at home. I'm saying we need to go back to that moment and that word that reminds us we have to be unmovable. Too much, too many times we are living a seesaw life. We're up and we're down. We're up and we're down. Jesus wants us to walk away from that. He wants our devotion. And our devotion must be in everything. In our purpose, in our loyalty, in our adherence unto Him, which means devotion. Can I say to us, be devoted to God. Because guess what? It's a, it's a thing that you have to do, or have to have, when that change comes. Glory to God. Somebody say amen there. Church, be devoted to God. Three, number three, as I close. We must abound always in the works of the Lord. Amen. If we are going to meet that day and stand up tall, lift hands in the air, and, 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 and just greet Jesus when he comes riding in the cloud, we have to be always abounding in his works. Somebody said the words. I like that. In the words. Church, I want to say to us today, we are, many of us are all guilty of that. We are not always abounding in the words of the Lord. But it's time for us as a church to come to awake and realize where we are. And understand that the always has gone out of it. We are abundant, but we are not doing it always. Are in an always attitude. We always seem to eat breakfast. I heard the sister say, breakfast this morning. Yes, we have breakfast. And tomorrow morning come, we're going to have breakfast. And the other day come, we're going to have breakfast. But did we have a breakfast this morning in the spiritual 
atmosphere of it. Did we ever break fast with Jesus before we come out to church this morning? Did we spend time and sit around wherever we pray and lift those hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this. Even talk that we have problems. Oh, that's a hard one to do, Sister Ponzi. We better thank God for our problems. Because sometimes, not sometimes our problems make us stronger next year. Stronger next year. Can I say to you, if you hold on, somebody say hold on. I say if you hold on to what that which you're going through, my sister, if you hold on to your problems today, next year you will be stronger. Next year you will be greater. Next year you will be. Amen. Right where God wants you to be. Young people, hold on to your devotion to God. And even in your problems, young people have problems with you. Even in your problems, be devoted to God. Can I talk, can I talk to you like that? Yeah. Even in your problems, my sister, yeah. my sister, uh, poet, uh, be, be, be strong, be devoted to God at all times. And I'll tell you something, sister, your, your, year to, your years to come will be greater than you thought. Yeah. Yeah. But be devoted to God. So close. But I want to tell you something more. Jesus is speaking to us today. And he's asking the question right now. To whom are you devoted to? To what purpose are you devoted to? Are you devoted to me in prince in your principles? Are you devoted to me, beloved, in, in your service? Many of us have this attitude. I'm tired. Many of us, yes we have been, but if we have to go, we be gone, we are gone. I'm saying we have to, we have to be principled enough to fight against the pain. Sometimes you know why the pain takes us over? Because we don't fight it. We don't fight it. I told you earlier when I was going on the first time that I was sick unto death. Trust me, my wife can tell you. I was sick unto death. But I was determined in my spirit that I'm going on that plane. And I told her that before I go on that plane, I'm going to be well. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be strong. And I tell you when I got to my job again and, and sit down in that seat and buy two party. Just to be in party there. And we feel nice. I'm saying to your friends, if I can fall, if I fall that feeling because I have a plan for tomorrow, why can I not fight the feelings and go and serve my God who came unto me? Why can I not be devoted to you? I told you I was sick unto death, just my thought I was going to die. But I was determined in my spirit that I'm going on that plane tomorrow. Oh, when I was going down the mountain of the road, the rough road, trust me, I sink out. To my sister, I can't talk to you. And I went out to sleep. And trust me, before I got on that plane, I was healed. Amen. Say, friends, fight the feelings of being devoted to God. Some of us are lazy, some of us are unwilling. Some of us are not steadfast. And I'm calling on the church today to be steadfast in every walk with Jesus. Because that change is coming. And that's one of the things you have to do. I always mean at every instant, every instant to get to praise God, you better praise Him. God, I have to close it. <laughs> well, let me read, let me move on. Constantly. We have to do it constantly. It cannot be three days. It cannot be four days. It got to be seven days a week, 24 7. <laughs> oh God, for all time. Beloved, it is it is about it is about going all the way with Jesus for that change. Brethren, I'm saying to you, let's go all the way for Jesus. Beloved, if we if we will not abound, we will not wear that crown. Amen. Can I say that again? If we will not abound our ways in the works of the Lord, we will not wear that crown. But it turns it's time for us to stand up and abound in the works of the Lord. And I mean always. If you're under pressure, abound. If you head up in your, abound. If you bend your opinion, abound. 
if you don't have no money, I'm bound. Whatever you go into, my brother over there, I'm bound in the words of the Lord. And trust me, when that day comes, you'll be ushered in glory. Yes. With everything, give thanks. At all times, give thanks. And to abound is to give yourself fully to God's work. But that change is coming. And I'm saying to us in this day, as I close, that early one morning, or early one of those, or these mornings, God is going to call for Gabriel. That tall and bright angel, Gabriel. And God, and God is going to say to him, Gabriel, blow your silver trumpet and awake the living nation. And I'm telling you something, friends. At that time, yes, in that day, our change, that change will come when Gabriel sound the trumpet and Jesus right out on this cloud and to take the church out of the churches. But I'm saying to you, friends, if we are not going to be steadfast, if we are not going to be immovable, if we are not going to abound in the works of the Lord, I'm saying to you that day will come and we will not be saved. We will not be saved. Do you want to be saved, beloved? You have to be steadfast. Do you want to be saved, my beloved? You have to be unmovable. Do you want to be saved, my beloved? You have to abound in the works of the Lord. For as much as you and I know that your labor will not be vain. All your labor that you're going to put in will never be vain. Church, I'm not going around any corner either. May I tell you as it is today? We're not putting enough work. There are more work that we need to put in. We, 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 we need to put in more work for the kingdom's sake. There are many that are dying and they are not, they are not enough quality time. We're not giving quality time. We are spending quality time on ourselves, on our business. And our qualification, but not given enough time to the work of the Lord. Today, I hope that something will reach us, and we will we will remember that that day that change is coming, and we will find ourselves in those areas in steadfast, in moving, and abounding in His work for as much as we can. Our labor will not be in vain.